Now this isn't comprehensive, this is just my opinion. Their side hustle is them telling you having a side hustle and then they sell you the course. That's their side hustle. You know, I work full time, but I also do programming, part-time programming. I don't think so. I think if you're happy where you are. And well, hello there everybody. I hope you're all having a good day. And so far, I'm having a pretty good day. And this morning, on my way to work, I was thinking, as usual, right? And so I want to share with you guys some of my thoughts and ideas about work. Because everybody has to work at some point, right? It's something we, you know, we, we have to do in order to do things like pay our bills and you know, get some nice stuff for ourselves, pay for our food and things like that. It's just one of those things we have to do. And, and you know, I'm talking about mostly people that aren't retired because if you're retired, you probably don't have to go to work and your work is very different. You know, at this point in my life, I'm not retired, uh, even though, even if I did retire per se, I'd probably keep busy with something. And, and you know, you know, that's something that something is probably travel. I would definitely, I would definitely travel. That's for sure. But I would probably also take on some type of part-time work just to sort of keep everything, keep everything topped up. You know, I know several people who I have spoken to have said that, you know, when they retire, they're going to go out on a road trip. They're going to go on holidays. They're going to go on a cruise and that's all fantastic. For me, what I would probably do is, yeah, probably go on a road trip, uh, do some van lifing, just travel across Canada. Canada is such an amazing place. There, there's just so many things to see in Canada. Like even in my own province in Ontario, I could easily have a huge staycation here and I wouldn't run out of things to do or see like, there's just so many beautiful places. But across Canada, out out west where you all know that I want to be headed to at some point there is I think there's even more and one of the things that is really amazing to me are the mountains when when I went to out west I went to BC I went to Alberta I completely fell in love with the place and I've been thinking about it every so often I know it just does something to you and I'm sure if you've been out there I even if you live there I'm sure it, it must do it must do something to you when you look at those mountains when when you're when you're out in nature I mean even here well even here in Ontario uh, when I go anywhere uh, any type of forested area wilderness uh, anywhere where there's nature it just makes everything that much better for me and so you know it would make sense that I start planning out a way so that I get out there and I continually talk about this because that has become the theme of, part of the theme of my van life channel here. You know, it's like I'm on this quest to head out west. The quest for west, all right? And, you know, part of that includes me planning everything out properly. And, and earlier in this video, sorry, earlier in this video, I talked about work and how, you know, it is a, it is a necessary component of my day-to-day -day life. Now, if you don't have to work, then you know, good for you. I mean, I'm, I consider you very fortunate and, and maybe you, you got everything together, then fantastic. But I think for a majority of the people that I know, like including myself, I have to work. And right now I work full time. You know, I work full time, but I also do programming, part-time programming. And I could see it at some point being full time again, but right now to keep everything really tenable and manageable for me I'm just going part-time programming and and the and the type of projects I accept are low stress projects projects that are short range short term versus long-term projects because you probably already know that the programming industry pretty much burnt me right out and and I think I, I kind of blame myself for that in some ways because I was just go 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 I needed to just get everything going so I got out of that industry, not completely. I don't think I ever got completely out of it because I always made my own stuff as well, right? And I also worked on some other projects. So there was a bit of a blending in terms of the work I do now and my programming work, my programming work I do for myself. And then I do work 
full-time for a company. And working full-time for a company has a lot of advantages. And I also know that if you run your own business and it's successful, that's amazing. Uh, I know there's the expression wage slave. And there's always this kind of battle between should you work for a company where you're making all the money for them or should you work for yourself and I've got my thoughts on that about working for a company and working for yourself uh, I've done both I have worked for myself I've run my own businesses um, I worked for a company and to this day I'm working for a company and running my own business there are a lot of advantages to both right but I think right now, based on the context of my life, based on how my life is and where I want to be, right now, working for a company is the best decision for me. And, and you know that could be completely different for you. Maybe working for a company is the, the worst thing that you could do. But then you also have to figure out a way to, to make an income because you have to pay your bills, right? And yes, I am aware about that whole concept and idea that you know you work for so long and everything enjoy your life right now and so on and so forth but i think that's great but there's you have to inject it with some reality so i'm going to talk a bit about that now this isn't comprehensive this is just my opinion but i think you have to work in this particular society or or, or context of life if i could call it that running a business is a lot of work I mean a lot of work and I know the last stats that I recall when it when it comes to running your own business is about eight out of ten businesses fail within two years so that's a scary number and also don't expect a profit there's very few businesses where you'll actually gain a profit when you first start out and unless you can carry that you're gonna have problems and and, and what I'm saying here isn't you know any type of super advice where I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert at this this is just my observation so you know take it with a grain of salt uh, some of you may completely disagree with my approach uh, others may think well you know uh, it's a good idea working for a company but I think there's a bit of a blended mix of both that can work and, and then you also have this concept of passive income I hear that a lot right passive income uh, there's also investments so there's all kinds of ways to sort of make money with your money right and there's but going for example looking at the passive income thing you have to be incredibly active initially to make that passive income and in some cases you have to invest some money to make that passive income you know the, no, nothing sort of happens on its own you have to force it to happen and that takes a lot of work also, running your business has a lot of stress associated with it. I mean, there's every business owner that I have ever met. Okay, you you tell you ask them one day, hey, how's it going? How's how's business? And they'll usually give the answer, oh, it's okay. But then if you dig a little deeper, you're going to open up a whole can of worms in terms of all kinds of issues associated with running their business, especially if it's a one man operation or one person operation and and the business like depends so much on them which to me is one way not to run a business where you are so closely tied to that business that without you it's not going to run that's you want a business that doesn't depend on you and i guess that's where the whole passive income thing happens but there's very few that can actually achieve that now i'm not saying any of this to discourage anybody i think if you're set on oh i gotta start work soon I think if you're set on starting your own business, by all means, I, I'm just you know letting you know that uh, it, it does take a lot of work. There's a lot of moving parts, and also it's just one of those things that you know we all have to do. Whether you you work for a company, you work for yourself, as long as you want to live in this sort of society, in this world, you know we we are based on the monetary system, right? You know, unless you want to sort of go out there in the woods and become a hermit, you be by yourself in a small cabin, that's really the only way, one way rather, that you can get away from all this. But even then, you're still going to be incurring expenses and you're still going to need a way to make some money. I know there are small townships, there are people that have small tiny homes that are building little communities. 
but ultimately because you are this world is based on the monetary system you know it's going to catch up to you and it's something that you have to deal with okay so um i'll probably continue talking about this at some point for now i gotta get ready for work and uh, let's see how the day goes okay just to continue on from the other day and i think it's important to to do that if i recall we were talking about working for a company versus starting your own business and I understand that it is a very personal decision it's contingent on or depends on one's life circumstances it can even depend on the uh, on, on your health your 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 relationship situation for example you could perceivably uh, let's say want to start a business but then your partner doesn't want you to start a business because they're aware of certain things or they're just not keen on it or, or whatever. Another reason that you can't start a business or it's difficult to start a business is because you don't have the proper financial backing, uh, facilities. Uh, th there's all kinds of reasons why a person wouldn't start a business. Other reasons could be your health as well, right? You just, you just don't have the health and mental state or physical state to start the business you want so those things all come into play so there, there's several reasons why starting up a business can be incredibly beneficial however it is as mentioned before it, it is a giant hill that you have to climb in many ways at least a, at least a majority of the people that I've known that have started a business you, you you really have to be consistent you have to be patient determined and making sure that resources are available when you need them and you do the work when it has to be done there's a level of discipline that you're going to need to start a business and because you, especially if you're going at it solo by yourself right and don't talk to me about partnerships because partnerships, the first four letters is part. There are very few partnerships <clears throat> that actually work out. Listen to me just talking about it. My voice is getting coarse and hoarse. So starting a business is an option. And along with starting a business, you, you are the CEO. You're the operations manager. You're the secretary, admin, you're the accountant, you're the garbage guy, the recycling person. Yeah, you're pretty much everything. You're the supplies manager. You're everything and you're wearing many hats. And for that privilege, you also get to do the work. You're also the salesman. And sales is, I I understand, I, I believe is one of the lifebloods of the company like if you don't have any sales you're done you're done for right the whole thing the whole capitalist system that we're in is all about selling right and being able to influence or convince or or develop a level of branding for your <clears throat> for your service or your product that says hey i'm the guy to do your work or hey i'm the guy to supply this particular widget for you right all those things come into play. So it, there's a lot of moving parts when starting your own business. If you can do it, you know, by all means, try it out. But I also understand people just need to try it out. And keeping it as simple as possible is one of the best ways to, to, to go about it, I think. You know, uh, nowadays, <clears throat> there are like services like Etsy. There are services out there like Spreadshirt, for example, in my case here, I sell stickers, okay? Stickers and t-shirts. You might want to check out my site. So, I mean, I, I'm definitely not going to quit my day job over it. But, you know, it's something that I sell as part of what I have here with the channel, right? And <clears throat> would it be great to get a t-shirt sale? We said, what? It's kind of fun. It's neat. But I wouldn't depend on it for, for my 
weekly or monthly income just because I just don't have that consistency. Besides, I have a full-time job, which at this time in my life, at this point in my, I guess, yeah, in my life, at this point in my, in my career, it's something I chose to do. <clears throat> it's giving me what I need, giving me a lot, it's giving me what I need. It's definitely not going to make me into a millionaire, that's for sure. And and I, I'm not looking to be a millionaire, I really am. It's helped me to simplify my life in many ways. And it, it's given me a few things that, some jobs that just don't give me, right? And I think whatever, whatever job that you take on, it's got to give you, it's got to give something back to you more than just money in many ways. Having goals outside your work is important. So if you if you decide to take on a part-time job or full-time job, oh by the way, the other thing you can do too is is a mix, a mix of both. You can have a part-time job and then you you can build out your your little company, your little business. That's another approach, a little safer. That, that might that, that could work for some people right it, re, it really it really depends on on your circumstances right I'm saying these things so that you can maybe get some ideas if you are looking into starting your own business right you know the expression everyone should have a side hustle I I mean I don't think so I think if you're happy where you are I don't think you need one right and, and I think what uh, what a side hustle does is, I think it just stresses out your your life unless unless you really crave it, right? I, I, I don't don't get sort of bogged down by these people that on the internet that's constantly selling a side hustle, uh, selling this, for example, Amazon FB stores and all this stuff. Uh, a lot of that stuff <clears throat> rarely work. You have to be moving a lot of product. You know what? Just Google it. Just go on YouTube and they'll talk to you about it. Now, I'm sure there are some that are incredibly, incredibly um, successful with it. But understand that them telling you having a side hustle, their side hustle is them telling you having a side hustle. And then they sell you the course. That's their side hustle. Their side hustle isn't the FB store. Their side hustle is selling you the FB store concept. It's sort of like, you know, at one point there was the, the, a gold rush, right? And so the expression goes, well, you don't want to be the one mining for gold. You want to be the one selling the shovels and picks. And that's sort of like what they're, they're doing, right? So if you can be that person selling the shovels and picks, then yeah, then, you know, this, this, this could possibly work for you. It could possibly work for you. Anyway, going back to the side hustle thing and having goals outside your work, uh, that helps to that helps for for the time to go by quickly. That helps for, for you to sort of sort things out. And that's another thing: uh, getting a a job, full time job, part time. Uh, for someone like myself, uh, especially at, at my age, helps me to sort of keep keep it moving forward. Without all the stresses of a demanding career, it, it really depends on what you choose, right? If you need to be, if you need to be in a in a particular sort of um, what do we call it? A not a not a a, a pressure cooker environment. You, you don't want to be in a pressure cooker environment, but you also don't want to be in an environment where you're just completely sedated. If you want to be sort of just like coasting along. Finding a job where it has the least amount of stress, the least amount of skills demanded from you, but at the same time makes you just enough or a bit more, that's what you want. Uh, at least at least to get you by what it is you're doing, right? So I, I think that's important. I think the, these are things that I wish someone had told me when I was younger. 
you know, spe like specifically, right? Um, and I've been get, given a lot of advice, very good advice, but not specific to how it is right now because right now times are very different. You know, right now things aren't things are yeah things things are very different. Business is different. How people make their money is different. So that's something to keep in mind. Not sure you guys noticed, but I'm on my way to work and it's sunny, 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 sunny. It's quite nice. And look, I think I need to wash my windows. I definitely need to wash my windows. Look at those windows. Yuck. There's a lot of traffic this morning. I'm literally stuck in traffic. Boo! Yuck, yuck, yuck. Actually, I don't mind. 